Hello, and welcome to Tech Deals Game Performance Review Battlefield 1. We're playing Battlefield 1 today on the $400 Acer Aspire T desktop computer. I have previously reviewed this computer, link in the video description below. It is an amazing value for the money. For $400, you get an Intel i5-6400, that's a 6th generation, 4-core, four 4-thread four processor at up to 3.3 gigahertz. The system comes with 8 gigabytes of system RAM. I have upgraded it to 16, and we have installed an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti 4 gigabyte dedicated gaming graphics card. Links to the installation of the RAM and the video card are also in the video description below. It makes this a great budget gaming machine. Now we are playing today at 1080p full HD resolution, high detail preset with anti-aliasing on and V-Sync turned off to allow us to get a maximum frame rate run. Now when you play the game, I recommend you run it with V-Sync on because it reduces screen tearing and makes the overall experience smoother. But since this is a benchmark, we have V-Sync turned off to allow us to get maximum performance for the purpose of the benchmark. Fraps was used for the minimum, maximum, and average game performance numbers you'll see at the end of this video, but it was not used to record the video you're watching. Instead, an external HD60 Pro hardware capture card was used to capture the video that you're watching. The computer doesn't even know it was being recorded, so there is zero effect on performance for having the video captured. Now the numbers in green at the top left corner of the screen are from MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is a free program that you can download from MSI.com. It works on almost any video card and gives you real-time information on what the computer is doing as you play. The top line, GPU, well that's our GTX 1050 Ti graphics card. The 99% indicates we are using all of the compute power, all of the horsepower of that graphics card. Basically, it's the reason why we're running it high and not ultra detail. If you want to play this game at Ultra, you'll need a GTX 1060 instead of the 1050 Ti, but those cost more. And we're trying to build a budget system, so we went with the GTX 1050 Ti, a very nice compromise of price and performance. The card is running at 63 degrees Celsius, which is a very reasonable temperature for this card that is well within normal parameters, and that it's running between 1750 and 1800 megahertz, a very nice clock speed for this card. The memory line, line 2, is not the main system RAM, that is the VRAM or video RAM on the card itself. We're using just under 3 gigabytes of RAM. It is running at 3.5 gigahertz clock speed, but since it is DDR doubled out of rate memory, you double that, so it's actually running at seven. The third line is our CPU, the i5-6400 chip itself. Four cores, four threads. It's currently, as I'm saying this, at 75%. Well, it was, now it's at 98. Battlefield 1 definitely makes use of four cores. In fact, in some situations in detail levels, it will make use of more. We are not using 100% of it, but it's close. You definitely don't want to play this on a dual core machine. It will run on an i3, but really, you want to have a true quad core machine to run this effectively. Take a look at our temperature, 55, 56 degrees Celsius. The Intel 6th generation chips run very cool and very quiet. There's no fancy cooling in this case at all. In fact, the case itself has no fans other than the power supply fan, and there's just a basic fan installed on the CPU. You don't need anything more. I often get asked whether or not basic coolers should be replaced with fancy cooling. Should you get a Hyper 212 Evo? Should you get a liquid cooler? Unless you're running the top of the line overclocked processors, it's completely unnecessary. We're, we're at about 55 degrees here. This CPU can safely run up to 80 degrees. We are not even close to the limits. This fan is quiet, the system runs cool. Don't touch it, leave it as it is. Now the fourth line is the main system RAM. Now we're currently using about seven gigabytes with the detail settings and how we're playing at the moment. Now this computer comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. A common question is, do I really need to upgrade to 16? Wouldn't 8 be enough? Well, yes, 8 is enough. It will run on 8. It's not like you're not going to be able to play the game or use the computer. Here's the thing. Windows itself is never going to let you use all of your available system RAM. It has to keep some of it free for swapping things in and out of memory for loading programs, so it will not let you use much more than about 85 to 90% of it. 
Furthermore, any unused system RAM is used as disk cache. Frequently used files on your hard drive or your solid state drive are stored in RAM, which is much faster than either one of them. And it allows uh, levels to load faster. It allows multitasking to happen faster. If you try to run this game on eight gigs of RAM, what will happen is the frame rate will not be as smooth. The average will probably be very, very close. When you look at the average at the end of this video, which I will show you when we get to the end, the average will be very, very close. The minimum will be different and the smoothness will be different. With only eight gigabytes of RAM, it will not be as smooth. Finally, it's worth noting, this is a test computer. There is nothing running on this machine but this game. This is a completely clean install of Windows 10. I don't have anything running in the background. There's nothing in the task tray running. I don't have any other programs that I've been running. There's no web browser open in the background. If you buy this computer and you use it for six months, over the course of that time, programs you install, things you do, will increase Windows memory footprint. More updates, future, future patches to Windows, it all slowly creeps with time. So what you are watching here is the absolute best case scenario of a completely clean machine with nothing running except for MSI Afterburner, Fraps, neither of which use a lot of RAM or CPU power, and then the game itself. Otherwise, it's a completely bare machine. I would strongly encourage you, if you buy a computer with eight gigabytes of RAM and you wanna play Battlefield 1, Grand Theft Auto 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, those kind of games. If you want to play those types of games, 16 gigabytes of RAM in the end of 2016, beginning of 2017 would be a strong recommendation on my part. We're talking about we're talking about 35 to 40 dollars to upgrade your RAM from 8 to 16. It takes two minutes. Again, the video is in the video description below. But what it does is it makes your machine smoother. And frankly, in this day and age, unless you have a very basic machine, I would definitely go with 16 gigabytes. That's my opinion. And then finally, look at the last line. We're running in DirectX 11 mode and you can see our real time frame rate. Now, one question people are going to ask is, why aren't you running this in DirectX 12 mode? Battlefield 1 has a DirectX 12 mode, we have a DirectX 12 card, and we're running Windows 10. That's a good question. First of all, in my experience of testing, Battlefield 1 does not run noticeably different whether you are in 10 or 11 mode. Some games do show a difference. Battlefield 1 is not one of them. However, even if it was a frame or two per second uh, faster, it's not going to be a huge difference. And finally, Fraps does not yet support DirectX 12. Hopefully they'll get around to it. And since Fraps is what I use for all my benchmarking, while MSI Afterburner will give us real-time numbers in DirectX 12, I wouldn't have a minimum, maximum, and average frame performance to give you. Now, if we get too far into 2017 and Fraps is still not updated for DirectX 12, at some point, I'm going to have to find something else to do benchmarks with. But at the moment, I'm living with it and running DirectX 11 since, after all, a majority of gamers are, in fact, still running Windows 7 and not Windows 10, and you can't run DirectX 12 on Windows 10. So if you're on Windows 7, then you're gonna be running 11 anyway. Do I survive? Hang on. Run, Forrest, run, get away from them. The interesting thing about this game is that while I've always had trouble with multiplayer in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3, I, I don't claim to be good at this, but it makes a lot more sense to me than those ever did. Maybe it's because it's World War I and maybe a simpler environment, or perhaps they just improved the interface, and look at that, I got shot from behind. Reminds me of that line from Star Wars, they came at us from behind, just as the, uh, ooh, flame tanks, that's just going to be a bad story. All right, well, I might as well come back up here and come back down again. On the plus side, if you look at the score at the top of the screen, we are 12 points ahead, 13 points ahead. We've got, well, that didn't take long for that tank to kill me again. We have three of the five nodes captured and they have two. So if we keep this up, we should have no trouble winning. Something tells me, however, that they are going to sneak around and steal one of the nodes from us. I'm going to place my bets on Echo. Why don't you keep your eyes on Echo and see what happens here in just a minute. They might be sneaking around, which of course, they would do that in real life, it makes sense. Battlefield 1 has been out for a few months now and it's starting to be discounted. Now I'll have links in the video description below to Amazon, Kingwin, and G2A. You can also take a look directly on Origin. They just got finished with their uh, Christmas sale, so by the time you watch this, it may not be on anymore, but the prices fluctuate and you can usually get this for about half the normal cost or less. 
So check out the links below and see where you can get a copy as cheap as possible if you don't happen to already own a copy. The interesting thing is I've played the multiplayer now for a variety of benchmarks and even done a couple of missions outside of it. Not a lot. Uh, this is not my personal preference. I prefer games like Overwatch myself. But I have yet to do the campaign mode and you guys should leave me comments in the comment section below as to whether or not you think the campaign mode's worth doing. Is Oh, put the gas mask on. They got gas out. Which is, I'm glad they put that in there. That's realistic. That was used heavily in World War One, Mustard gas and... Uh, and uh, chlorine gas, and oh, that was just, ooh, come on, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, and I'm gonna die. I got one, sweet. Yay me. I know, that's exciting. Look at that, we're only 20 points ahead. Have they captured Echo yet? I think they will. I think they do. I filmed this a couple days ago, so if they don't, then I'm confusing replays. I film a bunch of them back to back, and then I voice them over, uh, over time, so... So I could be slightly confused about the outcome here. Anything's possible. Now, as I'm saying this, we're at the 11-minute mark of the video. If you don't want to listen to my commentary and you just want to see the results, it's about the 18-minute point. So you can fast forward to 18 minutes if you don't want to watch it. But if you do, I'm going to leave it in so you can see the rest of the battle and the performance. Take a look at the real-time frame rate. Okay, it's not solid 60 frames per second. It just dropped down to 50 there. But think, we're in the middle of smoke, gas, that tank was on fire, and it was maintaining 50 frames per second second we're at 53 54 look at all the stuff going on that's actually pretty good now when we don't have the flames and the smoke watch the frame rate now okay we're on the map screen that doesn't count but hang on we're gonna get down here in a second deploy and 72 frames per second 68 62 there we go 58 now if you are the kind of person who wants a solid minimum 60 frames per second if you want it never to drop below 60 frames per second, no problem, set your detail to medium. I put it to high because it's a nice compromise between ultra and medium. It's, it's a little bit rough on ultra. If you turn the detail up from this, then it really dips down in the minimums. I would not recommend ultra detail on a GTX 1050 Ti. It'll do it on a 1060, but not a 1050. But, you know, put it on medium if that kind of thing matters to you. Now, for those of you curious as to what happens on a high refresh rate monitor or a higher resolution monitor, this would not be the computer for high refresh rate monitors or high resolution monitors. You could certainly play it less, but if you game it more than 1080p, then you definitely should have more computer than this. This is, this is completely, totally limited to a... He got me with a saber, with a cavalry sword. That was pretty freaky. This is totally limited to a 1080p gaming machine, even on basic stuff. Okay, fine. League of Legends, this will play fine at 4K, but I don't think you're really spending all this money to play League of Legends at 4K, although I guess you could. This is funny here. The driver, oh my goodness, he gets totally stuck. <laughs> and then we all bail out. How bad is that? Oh, man. Run, Forrest, run. Quick, run ahead and see if you can't die again. I told you they were going to cap E. There it is. Objective lost. Oh, we're losing D, too. That's not good. And we were a good 80 points ahead. Come on, team. Don't fail it. Now, there's nothing worse than being ahead almost the entire match. And then you blow it in the last five minutes because people either get greet. Look at that. We capped B. That was the problem. Then we pushed too far ahead and got B. Well, I didn't, but my teammates did. People get greedy and they want to take all the control points. You have to have a really good team on your side and a really bad team on the other side to capture even four out of the five control points. That is really, really hard to do. But I see that in all kinds of games, all kinds of online multiplayer games. You see it even when I play Star Wars The Old Republic in uh, player versus player, the, uh, the Alderaan scenario with the three turrets. People get two, they have solid control over two, and then one or two yokels want to go play the hero and they go try to capture the third they fail to capture the third and by pulling forces off of the two we already have sometimes you you end up losing all three that you have because one or two more people go oh our teammates are running over there i'm gonna go help and you take you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory seriously if you've got a majority of the control nodes and you're ahead on points just take the win too many games have, have had a win turn into a loss because people think they're going to be the Michael Jordan. They're going to be the superstar. Well, you know what? 
Okay, in fairness, I have played in games where we've had the Michael Jordan superstar, where one guy ran off and all by himself against three people managed to stun them and kick them back and stealth cap, and we ended up winning. And even if I comment, dude, what are you doing? Get back here. You're an idiot. And he's like, man, I got this. Don't worry about it. I, you know, I can handle it. And then he does it. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I'll even say, well, man, okay, you pulled it off. You're the exception. Most people aren't that good. If you're that good, okay, you probably know you're that good. If you're not sure if you're that good, yeah, you're not. Uh, I'm not. Me personally, not a chance in the world. I know I can't do that. I need a team backing me up. I am no expert player. I just play casually and for fun, and I figure if I win half of my battles, then I'm doing pretty well. I actually don't know what my win rate is in most of my games. I think in World of Warships, my win rate is 41%, which is pretty bad. But, uh, well, it's average. It's a little bit below average, but... Uh, 49% I believe is actually average because there are in fact a handful of draws. So I guess you could say I'm not the best player in the world, but I'm not trying to be. If you watch my Battlefield 1 gameplay right here and go, dude, what are you doing? You should have done this or you should have done that. Yeah, I don't play this that much. I'm, To be completely honest, I play Battlefield 1 mostly for benchmarking. I have played a handful of these outside of benchmarking, but it's not my go-to game. Overwatch, um, World of Warships, I'm starting to get into World of Tanks a little bit more. That's still mostly benchmarking, but I've been playing some of that more over the Christmas holiday. And then um, Star Wars The Old Republic. Those are really my go-to games for playing outside. Oh, an enemy armored train is in route. But you know what? It's not going to be enough. We are at 945, and they're at 843. And unless we are completely stupid, we have got this in the bag now. They're trying to challenge C, but it's not going to matter at this point. 953, there we go, 954, they're at 850, we're 100 points ahead. I never want to say, that's it, we've got it, it's in the bag, because I have seen this type of match turn into a loss. We've been 100 points ahead, it's been near the end, and then we just lose everything. People get really stupid, we run all over the place. Okay, at this point it probably is in the bag. That's that's if the enemy armored train had gotten here Two or three minutes ago. It might maybe have made a difference But even then they probably needed that back around the 700 ish point mark 986 988 I Think we might have ourselves a victory and speaking of victories. This is a victory for this machine Granted, we are using all the resources. What you're seeing here is maximum utilization of the computer. We are at 94, 91% on the CPU, 99% on the GPU. Victory! So if you want to know what maxes a computer out, Battlefield 1, 1080p, high detail on this $400 Acer Aspire T computer with a GTX 1050 Ti card added. Why don't we go take a look at the results? 60 frames per second. I kid you not, it was 60 frames per second right on the nose. Well, actually, to be completely honest, it was 59.987 frames per second. It actually gives me the number out to the third decimal place in fraps. That's 60 frames per second. It was minimum of 45 and a max of 101. Very good performance. Smooth and completely playable. I give that two thumbs up. Like this video if you like it. Don't if you don't remember to subscribe to my channel using the big huge red button directly below this video. Questions and comments in the comments box. And as always, check out my video description, a link to Amazon.com where I bought this computer and so should you because it is a killer, killer deal. A link to my full playlist on this computer and a link to Battlefield 1 to buy it on Amazon, kingwin.net or g2a.com. Find it wherever it's cheapest because it's actually quite fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.